When it comes to secularism or secular ideas, several European nations and the USA are often presented or perceived as global role models. But then, does it mean that the citizens of poor and developing nations should not use their intellect to carefully examine their rich nations, their systems and their hypocrisy? Point number one, constitutions and the separation of religion and state. Out of several available examples, let's pick Norway first, because it is often presented as a shining example of secularism. So, this is the constitution of Norway. See what is written in article number 2. Our values will remain our Christian and humanist heritage. So, how does this sound to you? Christian-centric or secular? Anyway, now read article 4. The king shall at all times profess the evangelical Lutheran religion. How shocking is that? Is it right to say that not only it sounds Christian-centric, but rather centered around one particular Christian denomination? And by the way, let me also show you what Article 2 of the Norwegian Constitution looked like in 2012. The Evangelical Lutheran religion shall remain the official religion of the state. The inhabitants professing it are bound to bring up their children in the same. Of course, this Article 2 of the Norwegian Constitution was amended in 2012, but as you can see, even the current version seems to display Norway's special love or preference for Christianity. Not only that, several Western countries even have an official state church, and this is true even in some Scandinavian nations, which present themselves as model secular countries. Point number 2. Jesus Christ and the so-called secular parliaments. So, this is the official website of the Parliament of Australia. Read what it says. The President, on taking the chair each day, shall read the following prayer. Can you believe that? At the start of every sitting day in the Parliament, there is a Christian prayer. Does this do justice to the cleverly crafted image of the multicultural Australia? Anyway, this is the official website of the Parliament of the UK. See what is written here. Sittings in both houses begin with prayers. These follow the Christian faith, and there is currently no multi-faith element. Please focus on these words again. Christian faith and no multi-faith element. How secular does that sound? And by the way, these are the Christian prayers for the parliament in the UK. Pretty long one, right? Point number three. Institutionalized discrimination towards minority festivals. Did anyone ever tell you that in many so-called modern Western democracies, Many minority festivals face poor recognition or a second-class status. For example, take a look at this. This is the official website of the Australian government. This is the list of their public holidays. Christian, Christian, Christian. But why is that? Do only Christians live in Australia? Now let's take a look at what is happening in Canada. Christian, Christian, Christian. <laughs> wow, reading this feels as if only Christians live in Canada. Now let's check the public holidays in Sweden, the so-called global leader in secularism and secular ideas. Again, Christianity is the main theme here as well. And this is the list of the bank holidays in Sweden. Of course, no surprise, Christianity is present everywhere. Not even one festival of non-Christians, isn't that shocking? And don't forget, Sweden has more than 800,000 Muslims, about 8.1% of its total population. And please don't forget, in Australia, Hindus are 1.9% of the total population, Buddhists 2.4%, but no public holiday for Hindu or Buddhist festivals. But of course, there is even a public holiday for Queen's birthday. How shocking is that? And yes, the situation is more or less similar in many other Western countries. As far as India is concerned, the 2011 census says that Christians are 2.3% of the country's population. But guess what? Take a look. The holiday list in India includes Christian holidays and holidays for other minorities too. Doesn't this look far more inclusive? But of course, this is not everything. The list of bank holidays in India looks way more inclusive, way ahead of Sweden's bank holiday list, which doesn't even have a single holiday for non-Christians. But how can non-Christians expect some genuine, secular or inclusive behavior from these Christian-majority Western countries that even discriminate against Christian minority groups of other denominations? 
For example, in Latvia, it was reported that Orthodox Christmas isn't an official holiday even though on January 6 and 7 it is observed by more than 20% of the total Latvian population. Even though Latvia is a country where Christianity is the dominant religion, not all Latvian Christians have enjoyed the same privileges. Unfortunately, just being a Christian is not enough. It also depends on what their denomination is. In the West, denomination-based discrimination from Christians against Christians is nothing new. Those who do not understand what Christian denominations mean, please take a look at this chart. Yes, you may have heard of the Shia-Sunni conflicts, but have you also heard of the brutal and painful chapters of conflicts, violence or division within the Christian community in which Christians have heard or looked down upon fellow Christians of other denominations? But anyway, why would they really want you to know this, as spreading this knowledge more may spoil the carefully projected shiny image of the West? Number 4. The influence of the Christian or the monotheistic God in the USA Do you know what the national motto of the United States is? In God we trust. Now, how secular is that? Is this official motto indicating the American government's endorsement of a monotheistic concept of God? After all, how about those who believe in more than one God, or no God, or something else? It's clear that the national motto of the USA seems inherently Christian, or at least monotheistic, and it sends a message to non-adherents that they are outsiders. But despite that, In God We Trust has appeared on all US coins since 1938 and on all US paper currency since 1957. In addition, the motto appears everywhere. American public buildings, public schools, and other government institutions. But how secular is the American general public viewpoint regarding this? Well, according to the CNN USA Today Gallup poll, 90% of Americans approve the inscription in God We Trust on US coins. And how about the viewpoint of the elected American politicians? Well, in 2011, the House of Representatives voted 396 to 9 in favor of this. How secular was that from these American politicians? Number 5. Clever packaging of the Western secularism model Did you know that in 2017, the American think tank PW Research Center released a report that exposed many Western nations which were found to be favoring Christianity, officially or unofficially? And yes, in the report, India performed far better than many so-called secular European nations which were caught favoring Christianity. But did the European or American media outlets do enough to promote this particular report? Of course, why would the rich Western nations want to promote or popularize such types of results that don't show them in bright light? Wouldn't they rather promote those reports or indexes whose methodologies suit them and make them rank on top? Is it right to say that the packaging of this Christian nationalism is done so cleverly in these nations that even their Christian nationalism ends up sounding like secularism to us? Many among us almost never hear that these countries are running pro-Christian policies or policies that reflect Christian nationalism. Why? How clever or cunning these countries must be that they manage to run such biased systems and not let that hurt their cleverly projected secular image. Of course, we need new indexes with better, more neutral and more comprehensive measurement tools to check a country's actual secular credentials. But if those indexes do not rank the rich Western nations on top, who will really want to come forward to fund, promote or popularize them? See you again.